Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me this week is Aaron Jurgens with Jurgens Incorporated. Aaron, welcome to the podcast. You're you're uh, coming back for round two here, but just in case somebody didn't catch the first one or it's been a while, maybe give the audience a brief introduction. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm uh, Aaron Jurgens. I'm from Carroll, Iowa. Um, that's in the west central part of Iowa. Uh, my family's been in agricultural since uh, the late 40s here, so I've been a lifelong resident of Western Iowa, and uh, my family's been heavily involved in agriculture on the cattle feed hog side now for me, and uh, I'm a member on the Iowa Pork Board, so I kind of get uh, involved in a lot of the top-down, bottom-up discussions from all around, So, but uh, today we're going to be going over some biosecurity. So. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. You get to see the the biosecurity from a lot of different angles, Aaron. Um, I think it's very timely right now with going into disease season to talk about what you're seeing new and different out there for biosecurity. So what's, what's the world look like for biosecurity right now in Western Iowa? Well, for biosecurity, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of going into a little bit of flu season, which it's, uh, you know, late October, early November in Iowa. So you're going to have a little bit of that, but, um, um, you, 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 I mean, it always starts off, like I always say the basics, you know, keep things clean. You can't, you can't disinfect dirt. You know what I mean? So always keep things clean. And that starts with a good quality wash crew and uh, just going through it and always having a third party inspect it. You know what I mean? If not yourself, just make sure somebody's checking to make sure that, you know, all the organic materials cleaned and the cup waters and the feeders and all that stuff. And then, um, uh, you know, always using a quality disinfectant, you know what I mean? That's, that's just the basics. So, but there's, there's, there's been a lot of people um, adding a lot of things to biosecurity though. So you find um, Aaron that people are adding things because of a specific disease challenge with the last turn of pigs or just in general, trying to get better at biosecurity. I think it's just general biosecurity. Um, you're looking at a lot of these integrators moving forward. They're, they're, they're changing the, the building designs. They're wanting ha- connecting hallways, um, you know, making sure things are all enclosed. Uh, so that way, the rodents picking up stuff outside. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of the the barns that were separated. We had to walk outside. They're uh, they're pushing people to connect those hallways, and even new barns. You know, they would they would they would it'd be hard pressed to see where they want to build something where it's not connected by hallways and you know shoots and separated out where you don't have cross contamination with traffic. So just in building designs from all the way up is is cha- is changing. You know what I mean? So that's that's been the the biggest push recently. So which I think is a great change. You know what I mean? So. Sounds like maybe they're taking uh, kind of the same practices we've put in sow farms for a while in terms of building design and trying to put those into wean to finish. Is that is that a fair analogy? Yeah, yep, and even nurseries, you know what I mean? So it's like, and then, you know, then they're changing, you know, I see companies changing procedures, even um, just just how things are handled, you know what I mean? So just like, I mean, a lot of people have had these, these practices in place of just making sure they're getting followed, but just site-specific boots, barn-specific boots, you know, when you're traveling from barn to barn using a specific boot, and then definitely, you know, procedures, um, you know, everybody's you know, re- redesigning procedures to handle mortality, how it's done, you know, how it's documented, how it's logged, you know, just bringing things to the dead box and, you know, how it's done with what coveralls, what boots and just, and it's always surprising when people start talking about how everybody does things a little bit differently, right, wrong or different, but there's a specific way that needs to be done, documented and trained um, to make sure things are being followed through properly. And that's just that's just basic everyday stuff. And that doesn't matter whether it's June, July or January, February. So it's a proper procedure that needs to take place. So are you seeing the the adjustments in facility design on uh, remodels? Maybe people are kind of, kind of getting to the end of their contract and they're, uh, they're having to make some facility adjustments to existing assets. Are you seeing that more as just a trend on the new construction? What little bit there is out there? It's, 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 it's going to be in part of the contracts where um if, if guys ain't willing to make the facility upgrades, they're going to more of a turn by turn type basis, or just, you know, as things go that, that, that grower might, you know, find himself having to find a different producer if the upgrades ain't made. Um, and it's, it's, it's things that, I, I mean, it's all stuff that w- makes sense. I think you'd have to argue about it, you know, just enclosed shoots, connecting hallways, you know, making sure, you know, bird netting's all the way around everything and everything's tight and secure. And a, a lot of this push is even coming from, I mean, 
don't even want to say these words about some like a foreign animal disease was, would get in. You know what I mean? Like those are the sites that you're going to want to have to manage around. You know what I mean? Because it's like you get in, you shower in, you're there all day. There's no animal tracking in and out. There, you're not crossing paths with traffic or anything. So that way there's sites, you know, the, the, everything's put together already for, for plans like that. You know what I mean? So it's just that way if, you know, a worst case scenario happens, you know, the, if you're planning for the worst case scenario, the e- the easier problems should should fall into place a lot better. You know what I mean? So if you're planning for the worst, the easier stuff, you know, the non foreign animal diseases, they should be, you know, nothing's easy, but they should be a lot better to take care of. So, yeah, there's value in the biosecurity today with today's diseases. And there's even more value if and when we ever have to deal with a different disease than we have. And it's hard to not look at history and say that there's, you know, there's there's going to be new diseases. There's going to be other infectious agents, whether it's mutation of, of bugs, you know, emerging diseases, so to say, or, uh, you know, a novel introduction of something that exists somewhere else, but we don't have it today. So there's value both ways. And in my experience, you know, once people get used to having a connecting hallway, get used to having a covered loadout, man, it makes life so much better. I can think about the same thing as a kid. You know, the first time I got a shower in and out of a farm, I thought it was really goofy, you know, going to it and doing it the first time. But, oh, when you jump in your personal vehicle and you're clean and, you know, that that's it, it's something that's easy to get used to once it's in place. Oh yeah. And it's, 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 it's great just to have it done too. Then you, you can wear decent clothes to the farm and you know, your, your car's clean and you're not dragging stuff from site to site. And it's, it's, it's just the way to go. You know what I mean? It's nice to start off with a shower too and get things cleaned up, ready to go. So, and as you say, um, I think another thing that we're, we're seeing too is just the way supplies are all handled. Um, you know, when it worked at the South farm, you know, they had the bio chambers and this and that where, even bringing supplies in the farm step by step and making sure things are sat, you know, I mean, everything's commingled on that UPS truck bounce around, you don't know what everybody's driving to just sit outside your door and, you know, just it's uh, bringing things in, disinfecting them, having downtime, you know, proper placement of procedures of, of getting your, your inputs into the farm properly. You know I mean, it'd, it'd be really devastating to bring one thing in and cause some type of, you know, virus outbreak that didn't have to happen just because you didn't spend time doing the proper procedures, you know, onboarding things into the farm. Curious to discover if you can manage your animal data and teams work with the touch of a finger? Some of the best and largest pig farm holdings worldwide use cloud farms to collect and analyze data like never before. How? With the most advanced mobile app to collect data accurately and super fast. For breeding, farrowing, weaning, and finishing. Also, this is the easiest way to assign tasks to your team and motivate to work more efficiently. You instantly understand what gets done on time and what doesn't. So yes, you can manage your animal data with the touch of a finger. Yeah, in my experience, Aaron, biosecurity is tough because we don't ever get positive reinforcement. Like you know, you're talking about that UPS box that's there sitting on the front step of the office when you get there, right? Like, yep, we know that there's steps that we should take to disinfect those supplies before they come in. And they may be a little variable farm to farm, but the reality is it takes time, takes effort. And if that box is sitting there in January, sometimes that's not a lot of fun, right? If that's addi- if nothing else, it's additional time that you're going to spend not time with the pigs or not time at home with family, all that stuff. And we never know when that box was contaminated with PED or when that box was contaminated with PERS, right? So we never know the day that we we took a step that saved, you know, saved us a lot of money, saved us a lot of time for having to take care of sick pigs. So I'm rambling, but that's that's always a frustrating one for me is how do you demonstrate to people the value in what they're doing? Because we get the negative reinforcement of this sucks to comply with sometimes, but we don't get that positive reinforcement of knowing when we really were the hero that day. Yeah, it's it's not a black and white. It's, you know, there's no oh my god, I saved the day today because I did one specific action. You'll never know. You will never know. You know what I mean? So you, I mean though, if you don't, if your pigs don't get sick, you'll know. But I mean, there's there's multiple different ways pigs can get sick. Whether it's the box, whether something blew in, whether the pigs had some underlying virus, you know, and uh, you know, vaccine that didn't hold. I mean, there's there's so many pieces of the puzzle, but. At the end of the day, every part of the pie needs to be held accountable. You know what I mean? So whether it's the vaccine givers, the supply breakers, the proper caretaking, the showering in and out, making sure the bird netting's correctly, making sure the hallways are connected, making sure the truck's clean before it backs up. I mean, there's there's literally, we could probably come up with a hundred different things that have to go right to get one thing right. You know what I mean? And that 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 is frustrating. You know what I mean? But 
at the end of the day, you know what I mean? If you do have a hog barn and you do have it on contract and you do want to be maintain your contract and you do want to be better than your peers, these are the things you're going to do. And it's just the way it's going to be. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Very well said, Aaron. It's an excellent capstone to our, our podcast. Um, really appreciate you coming on and sharing this update on what you're seeing in your area. Perfectly. Hey, thanks for everything. So hopefully we talk sooner than later. So yeah, we'll have to do it again. We'll get you on for round three. Thanks. Thanks for coming on again, Aaron. Not a problem. To the audience, thank you very much for listening in uh, to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Aaron Jurgens, I'm Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.